The world of the late Jurassic is filled with countless powerful and often violent dinosaurs, but this is nothing compared to the denizens of this time period's oceans. Ichthyosaurs, plesiosaurs, pliosaurs, and even fully aquatic crocodiles dominate the shallow seas and deep oceans that cover vast swathes of the planet's surface. Reptiles rule the oceans as much as they rule the land, and in what will one day be Europe, a life-and-death struggle between two different species of marine reptile is unfolding. A large number of Chimerosaurus, six-meter-long plesiosaurs, are currently swimming for their lives, using all four flippers for bursts of speed. Behind them all is their pursuer, the seven-meter-long pliosaur, Lyplurodon. He too uses all four flippers for powerful strokes, but where the Chimerosaurus are built for hunting fish, he is built for hunting other marine reptiles. His massive jaws, lined with conical teeth, are specially designed to pierce and hold large prey, such as the plesiosaurs that he is quickly catching up to. The smaller reptiles have been chased into the open water, and there is little chance for at least one of them to escape. However, there is a large group of something ahead of them, and as they swim closer to this third party, two things become apparent. They are a species of fish, and they are huge. The group of prey and the lone predator soon see that the creatures before them are a school of giant lead sixties. These massive 16 meter fish give off a frightening image when there is just one of them, let alone a whole school. But they are actually harmless filter feeders, not too different from model whale and basking sharks. They slowly drift through the open ocean, mouths wide open to filter through plankton and other small prey. For the Chimerosaurus, these gentle drifting giants are no threat. They are, however, a form of cover. The fleeing plesiosaurs break away from each other and disperse amongst the slow fish, using their flippers individually to make tight turns around their long bodies, hoping to lose or confuse the pursuing Lyplurodon. It works for about three seconds before the hungry predator picks out a target and begins to pursue. As the Chimerosaurus dart gracefully around the imposing forms of the lead 60s, they also lose sight of the Lyplurodon. And for one unlucky individual, he loses sight of it for just too long. Fast reflexes are the only thing that saves him, as the Lyplurodon appears from behind one of the lead 60s, bursting forward, but his open jaws miss his target, and the chase begins again. The two fast-swimming reptiles slip under a lead 60s tail, and then over the head of another, then the Chimerosaurus goes over the back of another, while the Lyplurodon flies beneath it. The predator closes in on his victim, his agility in the water matching that of the plesiosaur. Finally, they broke into some open water, and the Lyplurodon accelerated forward, its mouth open just enough for it to bite down on the tail of its prey. Now he had a hold of it, he wouldn't let go. But as he prepared to pull the victim towards him, something massive and heavy slammed into him. Being so fixated on catching his prey, the Lyplurodon didn't notice the lead 60s swimming straight for them, with its mouth wide open, and now the predator has not only lost his catch, his midsection was caught in the giant's mouth. This was not the lead 60s intention, it just happened to be swimming by when the two reptiles got in its way, and then suddenly it had a Lyplurodon stuck in its mouth. In response, it shook the carnivore from side to side, both trying to shake it loose, but also teach it a lesson. The Lyplurodon was completely beside itself. One second it had thought it secured a meal, the next it was being thrashed around, not unlike what it did to prey it secured in its own mouth. Being thrown around the water was disorientating, but the lead 60's jaws were doing little damage. The problem came from the Lyplurodon needing to breathe, Normally he could hold his breath for over an hour, but the chase he was just in and being speared from the side had drained all the air out of his body. If the late sixties didn't let go, he could drown. The weakened reptile beat his flippers again and again, trying to free himself, and eventually the enormous fish got bored and tossed him to the side like a child discarding a toy. Now free, the Lyplurodon put all his effort into swimming to the surface, he only had a few seconds. His vision was growing dark, and his flippers felt heavy. 
The calm water's surface was broken as the mighty reptile burst upwards and took the biggest breath of his life. He rested at the surface, completely exhausted. His hunt had failed, but one of the Chimurasaurus was bleeding, and so he may be able to locate them as soon as he recovered his strength. Below, the school of lead six thieves regrouped and fell back into line. As adults, nothing in these waters could touch them, and they spent most of their time far out at sea. But it is when they come closer to shore that they are more likely to encounter other large sea life. But today's antics were a bit more unusual for the usually docile animals. So they returned to filter feeding, leaving the reef behind them. Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down the original giant filter feeder, Lead Sixties. Lead Sixties was originally discovered in 1889. Its fragmentary remains made it so hard to identify that it was originally given the name El Problematicus. Since then, more remains have been found in England, France, Germany and Chile, with over 70 individuals found, but all of which were fragmentary. It is the largest member of the Pachychromidae order, an extinct family of fish that survived until the end of the Cretaceous period. Lead 60s itself lived in the mid to late Jurassic era, between 165 to 152 million years ago. Because of the incomplete remains, the size of the animal was difficult to calculate. Previous measurements put it up to 27 meters, which is close to a blue whale. Modern estimates put it at 16 meters long and a weight of 40 tons, making it the largest bony fish to have ever lived. It was a filter feeder, drifting through the oceans and gulping down mass amounts of plankton, and possibly whole schools of fish and cephalopods. To do this, its head was enormous, with a wide and tall gape, so that prey would flow into its mouth and be caught up in the gill rakes that lay on the gill arches. These would filter the plankton and allow the seawater to pass through. The rest of the body was long and streamlined, with long thin pectoral fins and large stiff tail fins, used to push its huge bulk effortlessly through the water, reaching speeds up to 18 kilometers per hour. They may have taken up to 20 years to grow to adult size. The oldest individual, which was also the largest, was calculated to be 45 years old at the time of its death. Given that they were probably too large to be hunted at full size, and also their filter feeding diet, it is likely Lead Six Thieves was a gentle giant, and not unlike modern whale sharks, basking sharks, and baleen whales. Other theories on its feeding include it being able to spout water from its mouth. This comes from fossilized furrows discovered in ancient sea floors in Switzerland, originally attributed to plesiosaurs. These could have in fact been made by Lead Six Thieves, spouting water through its mouth to disturb and eat benthons and other creatures that live in the seafloor. The time at which it lived was teeming with all kinds of massive sea creatures, from pliosaurs like Lyplurodon, ichthyosaurs like Opdalmosaurus, plesiosaurs like Cryptoclitus, and marine crocodiles like Metrorhynchus. However, lead 60s went extinct at the end of the Jurassic era, most likely from climate change leading to major drops in its food supply. It's cool to think that with all the vicious predators that ruled the seas of the late Jurassic, that there was at least one passive creature casually riding the currents and enjoying itself. But what do you think of Lead Sixties? And do you believe that it actually might have had a violent side? Let me know what lesser known extinct creature you'd like me to cover in a future episode. And until then, thank you for watching.